All right, so I got my gearbox installed. And I'm gonna say now that I'm not really satisfied with it. It does work. I got a wobble in the gear. You'll see this here in a moment. What happened is my I couldn't get my welder to work. And it turns out that there was like four strands of wire from the lead to the stinger. So I had to rewire that. So I actually tried brazing it. If you guys can see that in the dark there. And my brazing, my torch is crap. I just have a little jeweler's torch so I couldn't get the metal hot enough. So I'm not really satisfied with it. Right now it's just running on hydrostatic bearings in soft steel but it works and it gets my torque on a low speed to a fun an absolutely amazing range so let me fire this up i think i'm in high gear right now and this chuck everything's gonna wobble to hell this chuck's pretty out of balance so this is my high speed and that's my slowest on my high speed and there's not much torque there i mean i can't stop it but i can slow it down but it'll uh you can see the wobble now plus i don't like these pulleys and this belt is too small i need a, a four series a half inch belt so i got the speed in my top sounds like a choo-choo train So I still got my top in. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rebuild it and rebuild it right. I'm gonna try to find, these gears came out of um, uh, lawnmower transacts. So I have another one out there that's a hydrostatic. I don't know what it has for gears in it, but I'm gonna take a look. And if not, I'll find another regular transaxle and I'll build a good one while this one's in use. The other issue was I had to take all this stuff off my lathe to be able to do this. And so my lathe was down, so everything I had to do, you know, if I had to bore out a pulley, it was all done on a rotary table in the milling machine, which wasn't much fun. So to change it, it's pretty simple. Just loosen up this screw. Got to <clears throat> need both hands for this for a sec, guys. Wiggle it, and that just lets me shift those two gears. I'd like to be able to do this where you can see it, but yeah, you can see how it moves the gears back and forth. That's not all the way over, but yeah, there we go. So that's one side to the other. So I'll put it in my low gear and then I tighten my screw back down. Just got a little divot there so it locks it into position. And here's my low gear. And this was my biggest thing. I wanted a nice low threading gear. So there's my slow speed and I cannot stop that or even barely slow it down it's got massive torque and it doesn't go very fast in low speed I think it'll do I think my calculations were about 300 that's top speed but it's nice threading here and I can actually increase that speed a little bit I have the motor controller set as low as it goes so I can actually get into the motor controller, which is inside here. And there's a, there's a little trim pot on these motor controllers right here. And you can actually adjust low and high. And so you can change the RPMs a little bit, but the higher you get your high end, the lower your, or the higher your low end goes as well. So I have this one actually at the lowest point. And I'm satisfied with whatever my speed coming out of there is. I mean, that's that's a good make it nice and easy to thread. I actually got a three-turn potentiometer on here, so it takes three full turns before it'll get all the way up. So it gives me a real nice uh, level of speed. And then I got a tack on here, which currently isn't hooked up, as you can tell. I don't know if you guys have played around with these much, but if you, you can use your start and stop switch. 
is to get rid of the soft start of a potentiometer off back onto the same speed. So yep, there's my little ghetto gearbox. And see if I can show this. So yeah, this is my shift mechanism. I just welded a or I should say ground a slot the ground mill the slot in there if you guys can see that. And then this is actually just on a bolt and I use the bolt and the washer so it actually stops it where I want those gears to line up. Like in this case, when I go all the way to the outside, it won't let that gear actually touch the outside. And the same with the other way, if I can figure out how to get it that way. It's not too bad to do two-handed, but one hand it's a little pain in the butt and there's so much gear ratio between this chuck. So yeah, there we go. And it's not actually touching on this side either. But yeah, there's so much gear ratio between this chuck and the motor that I mean, turning this thing by hand uh, is a flipping chore. So another thing I might do, because I'd like to put a handle on the rear of this so if I do any hand threading or anything you know I'll be able to bolt a handle on there and pull it over but I'm not going to be fighting with that so I would like to do some kind of a if I redo this some kind of a neutral setting so I can completely disengage everything so yeah that's a high low gearbox got a four to one here need a different belt because this one slips I just have it super tight because it's the wrong size and then my low gear which would be this pulley and the bottom one is another 308 to 1 so I got a 308 to 1 so we'll say a 7 to 1 gear ratio from what my motor is spinning for my low gear and then my high gear actually drop jumps it back up so it's like a 0.063 to 1 so it's the 4 to 1 so let's say like a 3.3 .3 to 1 so figuratively speaking that motor should spin at 6,000 rpms my high range in high should be 17 or 1800 with how it's currently set maybe a little bit less 1500 and then my high speed in low should be about 300 so that's about it i'm gonna have to uh I just wanted to get it put back together. I got some metal chips in here. That's cute. I reset my potentiometer. But this gear right here, back in the Grizzly, has got a massive wobble in it. You can, maybe you can see it down here. So, yep, that's factory grizzly there for you a wobble and bend and twist and thing and everything I actually made a new coupling for this because somehow they didn't bore it straight so the whole lead screw on this end did one of these made a bearing retainer for the back side completely remilled the tail stock to get it so it was dead set put a few screws in the top so I could pinch this down a little bit tighter because what would happen is you would snug this up a little bit and it would force the, the quill to move about a thousandths and a half over. So this way it's nice and tight. And then when I snug it up, it doesn't shift as much. Um, got a cam lever tool post lock. Cam lever... And these are both off of bicycles. I was being lazy. Uh, what else? I got rid of this stupid friction lock. Just put a little screw on these. Still got to do the tail stock, but and then I can lock that into a positive position. This one was, I couldn't even turn this one before without moving the actual slide. So 
new handles on everything. Um, yeah, new control pad. So that's it. Uh, I guess for now, get your butt in your shop and break something so you can figure out how to fix it, or make something broken so you can figure out how to improve it, like I just did. Anyway, later on.